Hi everyone, FizzFop here, and today we're going to do something a little different. Today we're going to do a deep dive into Wally Wood and his 22 panels that always work. I hope you enjoy videos on making comics, because that's what we're doing. A while back I did a video about Wally Wood, and in case you haven't seen it, Wally Wood was the first superstar comic book artist. Um, sure, there were a lot of people before him that were somewhat famous, C.C. Beck, Will Eisner, and Bob Kane, their names were out there. Uh, of course, in newspaper comics, Milton Kniff had the cover of Time Magazine in a shoe contract. Don't ask me how a comic artist can get a shoe contract, I don't know. But Wally Wood was the first comic book artist to have a fanboy following, where people followed him from book to book to book. They were following him, not his characters. In that video, I just mentioned Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work in passing, and I didn't go into any detail about it because it needed a video all of its own. I know after talking with a lot of you, uh, quite a few of you out there are making comics. A few of you have mentioned working for Archie or IDW or DC, and a lot of you have talked about crowdfunding your comic. So I thought it might be useful and informative for all of us to do a deep dive into Wally Wood's 22 panels. Hopefully some of you will get a kick out of it, and I hope that you can use this video as a tool for making your comics better. When I looked over videos that covered this topic, I discovered that there was a major element missing from most of them. The focus is always on the composition of the artwork, and what's missing is the context of the artwork. Wood was more than just a great artist. He was a great storyteller, and understanding how he used these panels is every bit as important as how he drew these panels. Before we get going, I'll give you a brief history. These 22 panels were never assembled or presented like this by Wood himself. These panels were actually small sketches that Wood made for reference purposes, and he taped them all over his studio. And when he got jammed in a story, he would look around and find a panel that could work and move on from there. One of his assistants, a guy named Paul Kirchner, assembled these little sketches and then put them on three separate pages. He made copies of these pages and then gave them out to a few of his friends around the comic book industry. One of the people he gave these pages to was former Wood assistant Larry Hama. Hama became an editor at Marvel Comics in 1980, and he found himself working with a lot of inexperienced artists. He got tired of explaining the same concepts over and over and over again on how to draw comics and tell a story visually. Hema shrank down these examples and turned it into the single reference page that you now see before you. After assembling this reference sheet, Hema taped it to his office door, and pretty soon artists from around the comic book industry wanted a copy of it. And that's how this reference sheet came about, and how it got distributed through the comic book industry. Before we get started, what I'm going to do in this video is that I'm not going to just show you the panels as they are on this page, but I'm going to show you examples of Wood's art. And while doing this video, I discovered that Wood has not only these 22 panels, but he has variations on these panels. And in some cases, he actually does reversals of them, which I thought was pretty cool. Another thing to keep in mind as we go through this, some of these panels are artistic in nature, and others are storytelling in nature. And it's good to think of each of these panels as a separate technique. And Wood often combines multiple techniques into a single finished panel. So as we go through examples of Wood's artwork, you might see multiple techniques into a single panel. The first panel is the big head. Yep, um, go ahead and laugh. <laughs> You've got a dirty mind, and that's why I like you. This is Storytelling 101 here. Uh, the big head shows us the character and the character's emotions, and an artist as talented as Wood can give us a notion of what the character is thinking and feeling without doing thought balloons or narration boxes. I want to point out this one panel in particular. This is a cinema-inspired panel. You see it in movies a lot. During the golden age of Hollywood, I think it was referred to as the All Faces East shot. Um, this is when... All the actors would be facing towards the camera and having a conversation. When people are talking, normally they are face to face, but many times in movies you see this shot with a person in the foreground being spoken to by someone over their shoulder in the background. This is uh, really popular in melodramas and you see it a lot in soap operas. A lot of the time, 
the reaction of what is being said holds just as much weight as the action of speaking itself. And by using the big head technique with the all faces east technique, Wood is putting the focus on the reaction and mood of the person in the foreground. Our next panel is the extreme close-up. The extreme close-up is a very powerful panel. It puts emphasis on something the storyteller wants to convey to the reader. It can show intense action or emotion, and uh, it can also put the focus on a small detail that would be lost in a big picture or a wide shot. It can also tip off the viewer to something that characters in the story are not aware of. Next we have Back of Head, Part of Head. And it's hard to find a wood page without this panel. Wood uses this technique for a number of things. First, by following the back of head character's line of sight, Wood is putting emphasis on what's in the background, whether it's another character or a landscape or an object. Second, Wood uses this technique as a way to handle a conversation between characters. Having characters face each other is a more natural and normal way of having a conversation. And again, it's, it's not about the character saying a line of dialogue. It's about characters interacting with each other. And if you notice, this is a reversal of the All Faces East panel I talked about earlier. Before, uh, the emphasis was placed on the character in the foreground, and this time Wood flips it and the emphasis is placed on the character in the background. Before we move on, uh, I'm going to show you an extreme example of how powerful this panel can be in a story. And this is from Wood's adventure hero, Cannon. Now to give you the backstory on Cannon, Cannon is a character who cannot feel emotion. He doesn't feel pain, but he also doesn't feel things like love and happiness. So when a young, attractive girl thanks him for saving her life, his reaction is emotionless. She thought they were having this bonding moment during their adventure, and to him it was just another job and he needs to move on. And Wood did this with like a stunning effect to the reader. I remember when I first read this, it was like, oh yeah, he doesn't have emotions and he doesn't latch on to people and stuff. And, and that was sort of a, a heartbreaking moment, not just for the girl, but for the reader. It's a stunning moment. Brilliant storytelling. Panel number four is called Profile, No Background. Wood uses profiles a lot, and in his finished panels, he often combines the profile with three-quarter profile shots or head-on drawings for conversation purposes. And its purpose is very similar to the panel we just talked about before. And of course, he has variations of this panel for having multiple people in one panel. One artistic aspect that Wood accomplishes uh, with this by not having a background is that he pushes the reader's focus onto the character. And here's a great example. Uh, take a look at the soldier in the bottom left corner. This is what we would call a three-quarter profile. And the focus is on the character's body language. And the panel gives you a sense that the soldier's gear is heavy and awkward. The next panel is White Ben Day, Dark Foreground. <laughs> that sounds like the name of a perfume. White Ben Day, Dark Foreground. You'd buy that perfume, right? For Valentine's Day? Uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, Ben Day dots. That's a subject for another time. A lot of people don't like them, and a lot of people think that they're archaic and outdated. So basically just think of this panel as a white background with a dark foreground. Similar to what we talked about in the previous panel, no background puts all the emphasis on the shape in the picture. And in this case, the darks and whites clash to an extreme and puts all the emphasis on the shape of the subject. There's another panel later called contrast and that will explain the more contrast element in detail but just keep in mind that generally the white background puts all the emphasis on the shape of the dark subject in the panel. Our next panel is called Open Panel, Complete Object Car Dash Plane. This is a very important panel for several reasons. The open panel is a panel that doesn't have any border lines around it. I think Wood loved doing these open panels because they create depth, and not for the single panel itself, but for the entire page layout. Looking over Wood's artwork, I think the purpose of 
these open panels is a way to break up the visual monotony of the layout design. In terms of the script, it can serve multiple purposes. It can be used as a, an establishing shot for time and place. And also in the script, it can act as a transitional panel between scenes so your characters can go from point A to point B. Hey everyone, my voice is starting to go and uh, I think this is a great place to end this video. We're also past the 10 minute mark and I don't wanna make these videos an hour long. I'll finish off the rest in another video. Um, I hope you found this video useful and enjoyable. And if you did, please hit the like button. If you're an artist or a writer or someone who uh, makes comics for fun, please leave your comments down below. And I know um, not just myself, but the vast majority of viewers would love to read your comments and insights on these panels. So feel free to get in as descriptive and write as long as you want. I can't wait to show you the rest of these panels. Some of the things I found in these later panels are really amazing. I found this one panel in particular that completely blew my mind. And uh, if you've ever seen that movie, The Usual Suspects, I had my own Kobayashi moment. Uh, I kept picking the picture apart, like, what's he doing here? What's he doing here? And I started laughing out loud like a lunatic when I realized what was going on in this, in this panel. Um, I'll save it for the next video. It's time to call it a day. I will see you later. Stay super, everyone. Bye.